I want to, I've got a couple questions here uh, that we've already kind of gotten in, and I wanted to go ahead and uh, kind of open up uh, and ask you guys uh, some questions that uh, folks uh, that have sent questions in already. Um, and I think this may be kind of geared more specifically to maybe Chris, um, uh, maybe Jenny, I don't know. Um, have you received, uh, excuse me, um, this is um, maybe a two-parter in some ways, I don't know. Uh, have you received uh, any commitments from uh, historically black community organizations um, to kind of help in your efforts and kind of uh, what type of coalitions uh, will be important for Enroll America kind of going forward in outreach? Yeah, sure, I'll take that and Jenny can add if I miss anything. So I, NAACP is, is on our advisory council and is an important partner of ours nationally. Um, there, there may be others that Jenny will they'll add later, but you know, I, I think to answer the other part of the question, um, you know, we're, we're going to have a pretty robust constituency engagement department and within that team have an African American director who works on these very issues and, and I'll, I'll highlight a few things. I mean, one, on building coalitions on a national level to make sure that we're working with the right organizations, but also on a state level. Uh, it, and beyond that, really thinking through a couple things on the ground is when I talked about the grassroots organizing, making sure that we're designing program for the people that are organizing in communities, that they're organizing both the, the organizers themselves are reflective of those communities and that the tactics that they're using, the way that we're communicating with those communities is, is you know, effective and reflective of those communities. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that this, this department will be in part responsible for that on the grassroots level and also working with our digital team and our communications team to ensure that we're doing all the right things to communicate with different people. There's certainly websites that are uh, that geared towards certain constituencies more than others um, and then communications as well, thinking about radio and TV uh, and other you know mail and things of that nature. So I, I think that, that team will, will certainly expand our partnerships because uh, again, we're kind of in the early stages of, of taking what's been done and, and all the national partnerships that we have and, and bringing it down to a much more local level. Okay. So you, you are very much kind of leaning towards tailoring toward various specific regions. Again, you know, even past, uh, say, just the state level, you're, you're trying to get down into those uh, trusted messengers. Ab absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And again, it ties in in part with the, the data and analytics that I talked about that, you know, we have some ideas and we'll work with partners on the ground to figure out what are those messengers, who are the right organizations. Um, but as we do it, as we begin the process, we'll get a better sense of what's working and what's not. Uh, this, the, this, this team, the constituency engagement team, will help keep us honest and focused on the right things. Okay, okay. Thank you. Um, let, me, let me go to another question here. Um, who will be helping consumers? And I think this might be more geared for uh, maybe Sarah and maybe uh, Jenny as well. But um, who, who will be helping consumers and, uh, you know, why should people trust them? I, I think is kind of the overall question. You know, there may be uh, sites out there that are just popping up saying enroll here, sign here. Um, how do people know that those can be trusted and, and, or any of those kind of assistance uh, that's being offered? That's a great question, and we do know that there are already um, sites popping up or, or mail being sent to people, you know, sort of claiming to be a part of this new marketplace. Um, and, you know, folks need to be very, very careful with where they're getting their information from. We really encourage folks who are online to um, access healthcare.gov or cuidadodesalud.gov um, as, as sources of information. Um, we also know that the hotline for the marketplace will be open in a few months, and that will be also a source for, for people, even before they're able to fill out the application to call in if they have questions or concerns. Okay. Thank you. Um, let me let me ask um, do you um, have you received any other sort of uh, say commitments from other organizations uh, kind of going forward for You'd mentioned uh, NAACP. Sure. Yeah. Um, are there any others that you could, it, could mention as well? NCLR is an important part, partner okay. of ours. Okay. Um, you know, slightly different tax, but also you know, you think about Young Invincibles as well. The young population is very important. Um, pretty high rates of uninsurance. Um, and, and I don't know, Jenny, if there are others that come to mind. I don't have the, the whole list of all of sure. our partners yeah. at the top of my head. But. Yeah, I mean, we've got over over 50 different partners now, all of which represent really key constituencies that we want to be reaching and making sure that 
they have the tools they need to move a unified message and reach their constituencies um, in the best way that they that they can. Um, in terms of communities of color, we've also um, got partnerships with the National Urban League, the National Medical Association, the Joint Center on Political and Economic Studies, as well as the um, National Hispanic Medical Association. So we're really trying to make sure, in particular, like I mentioned before, that we're reaching providers and, and giving them um, they already do a lot of work um, to, to provide the health care to the people that, that they serve. And I think asking them to take that next step and help folks connect to coverage isn't always a natural fit. It, mm -hmm. it makes sense to the consumer, but in terms of what the provider has to consider and the scope of their work, that can be a challenge. So we're trying to figure out ways to make sure that they feel they have the tools they need to do this and that it isn't um, as heavy of a lift so they can help, help consumers when so they're it asking. It sounds very uh, collaborative and dynamic kind of going forward uh, are two words that I would think of. Let me ask you, Jenny, um, I'll direct another question towards you. Um, what's the single most important uh, practice that you would think needs to be adopted <laughs> uh, to make the promise of getting everyone enrolled in reality? Gosh, that's a really hard question, Arian. Um, <laughs> don't, I don't I don't think I can answer with a, it's a single answer. Um, we need the systems to work well, and states um, and the federal government are doing their absolute best to make sure that um, that they're as good as they can be by October one. But we know they're they're you know an evolving process, and they will continue to get better over time. Particularly once start, folks start using them, we need to figure out what doesn't work. We want to be able to, um, through even our grassroots campaign, look at what's going on on the ground and and turn that information around, get it to policymakers, and make sure that in real time we're able to um, encourage some good solutions when things aren't working well. Um, the other side really is just assistance, assistance, assistance. Um, we don't want people to um, have a bad experience and ten t tell 10 friends. We want them to have a great experience and tell 100 friends. So um, it's really making sure that people have all the tools they need to, to get through this flawlessly. Okay, very good. Um, this question uh, may get back to kind of some of the things that Sarah was talking about. Um, you talked about resources. I wanted you, you know, you'd mentioned, you know, how folks can tr kind of trust uh, various offers and um, kind of speaking to that concern. Um, you know, when folks have questions, you know, where do they go again? Like, what what are they going to uh, um, at this point if they're interested? Like, where where should they be looking? What, you know, kind of going forward in the months to come. Yeah, so there's definitely um, a lot of good information already available on healthcare.gov and, and cuidadosalud.gov. Um, there's also uh, ways on both of those sites where people can provide um, like email addresses and their phone numbers to get emails and text messages as things are rolling out so that they do know, you know, once, um, once a new website is live or once uh, sort of new options are open, what's available. Okay. And I would just add to that also, just because I think we can't, we can't blanket the the airwaves and the the internet with with accurate messages enough. That Enroll America has also been going through and creating sort of state profiles. We know that the information um, that consumers are going to need to make these decisions varies considerably by state, and so folks will also be able to, if they happen to come to our website, um, <coughs> click, click on their state and and get the right link to the exchange that's operational in their state. Okay. Well, thank you. I um. I think that's all the time we have. For, oh, we've got one more question. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> um, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, Chris, <coughs> uh, Chris, you mentioned uh, you worked on a campaign last year specifically. Um, how did you use the tactics that you kind of mentioned um, today, basically, to kind of engage communities of color? Um, yeah, well, so s some of the ways that we're setting up the organization this time around are, are comparable to the way I, the organization worked for me. I was in the state of Ohio uh, running the presidential the campaign for the president there. Um, and we similarly had this constituency engagement department that worked really closely with the other departments um, to ensure that, that all of our tactics on the ground were informed um, by some of the lessons that they learned. I think what's really important kind of on a, just a fundamental level is that we, we make sure that our organizing uh, is always reflective of the community, whatever community that is. And I think that was kind of the ethos there, and I hope that it'll be a part of the ethos in this community. I mean, I think specifically in that area, uh, in, in specifically in Ohio, we really thought about as it related to African American organizing, what are the tactics that we, that we needed to use that were most effective. I thought working within the faith community, I alluded to that earlier, was really important. Uh, so identifying what we called in that role, 
uh, congregation captains, okay. uh, people that, that were active members of, of their community. And it wasn't about the street that they live on, but rather where they go on Sundays uh, and were really seen as leaders. And I think using them, again, to go back to something that all three of us have mentioned today, the, the importance of trusted messengers. Uh, and so establishing relationships and building that trust with those messengers and then making sure that they had the tools necessary to help you know, inform and persuade and mobilize people in their community. And another thing that I mentioned earlier was some of the work that we did within small businesses, specifically barbershops and beauty salons uh, is something that we've actually did a lot of organizing around uh, to, to, you know, it was very effective. You know, in that case, it was more geared towards voter registration. Um, and so I think this, that was about an action, taking action around voter registration, but it was working with people in those businesses or in barbershops saying, hey, can you put out this information? Can you put out the voter reg? And as people come in, talk about this. Clearly, we're not going to ask uh, people in barbershops to enroll, uh, you know, to sit down with, a, with an application and enroll, but we can ask them to take a more active part in their community. And as people come in and out, talk about, hey, do you know what's happening sure. from October? Do you know what's available to you and to members of your family? And kind of a place of discussion, really. To kind exactly. Of, yeah. Exactly. Okay. okay. Well, I, uh, I think that's all the time uh, we have for today. I want to thank everybody um, for joining uh, our guest, Chris Wyant, uh, Sarah Bagge, and Jenny Sullivan. Uh, and for all of our participants, um, do remember that they're available as resources kind of in the future as you're, you know, digging into this issue, um, preparing your stories or any kind of stories uh, going out. Um, I also want to quickly mention um, that Families USA is going to begin in issuing a, uh, our premium tax credit report. Uh, in about another week or two. Um, it'll be a four-week rollout of state-based reports uh, about those eligible for uh, premium tax credits. And we'll have race and ethnicity data uh, included within that report and uh, county data as well. So it'll go down to the county level. Um, and again, I just want to say thank you guys for joining us. Uh, I've, I've really appreciated the information that you brought, and I hope it'll be helpful for those who uh, tuned in today. Thank you, and have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Three, two, one. Thanks, Arian. Uh, and so in Rural America, our, our mission is to maximize the number of uninsured Americans that enroll in health, health coverage made available by the Affordable Care Act. Today I want to talk a little bit about our campaign, our grassroots campaign, Get Covered America, and what it's going to do um, to get outreach to the to all the, American, the uninsured Americans that you talked about and increase the awareness that you obviously said we have a lot of work to do on that front. Uh, just for context, last year in 2012, I had the privilege of running the president's campaign in Ohio where we had hundreds of staff um, working on, you know, on the ground, doing organizing, digitally, communications, building partnerships that worked, you know, hand, hand in glove together to mobilize hundreds of thousands in that state to turn out to vote for the president. We're going to try to use many of those tactics that we use, and I'll, I'll get into more detail on what those tactics are, to, to inform and motivate people to enroll in healthcare this year.